What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the August 16th episode of Impact. Another great show. We actually opened the show with a main event worthy match. Uh, this match actually closed the second night of tapings. But from the match you couldn't tell. Generally what we were used to anyway back at the Impact Zone in Orlando is you could tell when the tapings had ended just because the crowd was completely aghast and exhausted. Um, the crowd was super into this match, and it was a great way to kick off the show. And that match was Sammy Callahan versus Phoenix. Uh, I'll just run down some of the highlights, but uh, Phoenix really started off really hot in the match. He uh, was walking the ropes, and he had Callahan's hand... Jake Chris jumps up on the apron. Phoenix just stops on the ropes, kicks Jake down, and then flips over Callahan. Phoenix hits a flip over the top rope onto all three members of OVE on the outside. He hits a swanton bomb. Callahan started getting the upper hand when the Chris got involved. Uh, Callahan hit a half Nelson driver, I believe they called it. And like I said, the crowd was into it. Um, Callahan obviously spit into his hand like he normally does and chopped Phoenix. Uh, this brought a that was gross chant. Then Sammy starts to rip the mask off of Phoenix, and that brings up an Ohio sucks chant. And they were just getting on the case of Sammy the whole match. But that that was great stuff. Sammy is playing a fantastic heel. Um, Phoenix ends up getting thrown onto the stage. He hits a back handspring cutter on Sammy on the entrance ramp. With Sammy in the ring, Phoenix hits a springboard twisting cutter from the ramp into the ring. Um, he hits a Hurricane Rano off the top. Sammy hits a powerbomb and puts Phoenix into a half crab and transitions that into a crossface. Uh, the Chris brothers start to attack Phoenix on the top rope. This brings out Pentagon Jr. They Pentagon takes care of the Chris brothers. Phoenix puts Sammy into the muscle buster position, drops him down, and finishes him off. Great match to open the show. Really set the pace for the night. Um, and yeah. So then we got a StarCast commercial, which was uh, a little interesting. It's the first time we've seen this one, I believe. Um, but it was advertising for StarCast before All In on September 1st. Um, and then we go backstage, and we learn that after Phoenix's victory... He will face Brian Cage in two weeks at Impact Redefined. So their TV special will be redefined for the month of August. Um, Cage and Phoenix end up meeting face-to-face -face backstage. Then we get a Chris Jericho Cruz advert, and that transitions into the GWN moment of the week, which lasted six minutes. Um, it was chaos that ensued at the Impact Zone at one point with the whole roster out fighting each other so that was that six minutes a little excessive but unfortunately i'm not the one that runs the things so then we get a backstage interview with alicia and ali ali says she is no longer going to be distracted by tessa the knockout championship or the undead bridesmaids she is going to put an end to sue young then we got jimmy jacobs versus johnny impact Don Callis made an interesting note when Jimmy Jacobs was making his entrance that Jacobs looks like his prom date from high school. I got a good laugh out of it. Uh, Jimmy cuts a promo before the match, and as Johnny's making his way to the ring, Congo Kong shows up, obliterates Johnny Impact on the ramp, throws him into the ring. Jimmy, well, then the bell rang. Jimmy goes for the quick victory. Impact kicks out at two. Jimmy starts hitting him. Johnny is no selling it. Um, that point, Congo Kong decides to insert himself into the ring. Referee throws the match out. He lays out Johnny again. Jacobs and Kong go to the outside. They grab the steps. Uh, it looked like Kong was going to power bomb Johnny onto the steps. Johnny counters it, goes for a springboard DDT off the ropes, but he gets thrown into the ring. Uh, then he, I believe, drop kicks Congo Kong and then is successful at hitting the springboard DDT onto the ramp. This sends Congo Kong off of the ramp. Jacobs grabs a chair, goes to attack Johnny. He no sells it. They play a little bit of cat and mouse. Impact picks up the steps and kind of smashes Jacobs in the face with it. He tumbles back down and Johnny Impact stands tall. Um, 
And unfortunately, I don't think he was at this last set of tapings due to his injury. So I'm guessing they're going to push this off a little longer. So we go backstage and KM and Falaba are there. They meet up. They think they have, or they both think they have a date with the same person. They go back and forth trying to get to her first. They end up in the room. They see Scarlet. We get the introduction of the, the smoke show. Uh, KM goes to sit down next to her. They go back and forth a little bit trying to, because I believe Falaba had wine with him. So KM stole it and sat next to her. Uh, this, this was interesting, and I, and I like the way they did it. I don't know how well it's going to work with other people because I think KM and Falaba have a really good chemistry together, and this whole segment worked really well. I enjoyed it. Um, so anyway, she sits down with KM, and she talks to them about their problems that they've been having. KM says that he's been trying to make Fala do things his way, and the, you know him and Falaba start arguing back and forth. Scarlet says maybe you should try things a little different, or things follow Ba's way. Um, KM turns his attention to Scarlet at this point, says, I'm from Brooklyn, I know your type, yada, yada, yada. So she goes and puts her finger in front of his mouth, and he stops. She leans in, then he leans in, and he tries to kiss her, and then she just gets really close and goes, maybe you should do things my way. So then at this point, KM just completely changes his tone. He says he's going to be more like follow. We can do things your way. KM's all excited. He's like, we'll get matching gear, all this stuff. He goes, gets up, and leaves. And then follow va the music plays again. He tries to spit his game with Scarlet, and this ends up getting him slapped. And she says that was disgusting or something to that note. But it was a good segment. I enjoyed it. I I like what they're doing with Falaba and KM, even as a comedy team. It just works between the two of them. Like I said, the chemistry is really good, and I'm glad that Impact is doing something with them, considering they are huge crowd favorites. Um, but like I said, I don't know how well this Scarlet, this smoke show is going to work with other people. Obviously, they're going to have to change it up a little bit. But it's got my attention, and uh, we will see where it goes from there. So out comes Austin Aries. He says it's great to still be world champion, and he says he's here to obviously answer the questions about his relationship between himself and Killer Cross. He brings down his new insurance policy, Killer Cross. They say they're here to create change, and they're going to shove it down your throats. Everyone pays the toll. Eddie shows up at this point, Tendo stick in hand. He goes to attack Killer Cross. He's eventually able to lay out Killer Cross after a bunch of hits, and then he hits him with a cutter. Ares lays out Edwards with the title, and Cross chokes him out. Ares did make a couple jokes. He said something about uh, swing. If you swung your stick better at home, your wife wouldn't have slid into my DMs or something like that. It, it was pretty funny. Um, but this was good stuff. Um, very interested to see where this goes. Ares obviously aligning himself with a much stronger adversary. I mean, eventually we know this is going to be Killer Cross's way to getting to the title, but I would, um, I think that's fantastic, just the way they're going to run with it. I think Killer Cross will make a great champion one day. He's just got that look, that persona. He, he's got world championship material, or he is world championship material. Uh, then we go backstage, and we see a disturbed Eddie talking to himself, just going, what are you going to do, Aries? Choke me out? I'll choke myself out. At this point, Alicia comes up to see if Eddie is okay, and he's still going on. She goes, you're crazy. And he says, I'm not crazy. And so that that's still continuing. And then we have Eli Drake with Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee versus Joe Hendry with his squad, Grado and Katarina. Um... So I think as Eli was making his way out to the ring, Callis turns to Josh and says, asks if he's booked for the Night of Dummies. Josh says, yeah, I'll be calling it. And Callis is like, perfect. Obviously, that Josh is a dummy. Um, so Joe Hendry makes his entrance out, and it's a whole song about the cult of Lee, and it, it was just great, fantastic stuff. I love that they are going all in with Joe Hendry and his entrances and things like that. Um, Definitely helping this this feud out along. Uh, very interesting to note that Trevor Lee was pay, playing cheerleader to Eli Drake. Normally, how 
Caleb plays cheerleader to Trevor Lee. So I'm very curious to see where they go with this. If this is going to be some the dissension between Grado and Joe Hendry is going to split off in one way, and Eli Drake and the Colt Lee is going to go another way, it's kind of like they did with the uh, Eddie and Sammy thing. Not to that extent, obviously. But the two put on a good match, Eli Drake and Joe Hendry. Uh, very fast pace, very competitive. Um, com- a lot of back and forth. Grado gets up on the apron. This distracts Joe. He tells Grado to get down. Gets rolled up by Eli Drake. And what took forever to be a three count because the referee was distracted, I think, with Caleb or Trevor Lee at this point. Um, but yeah, it seemed like he was rolled up for a little while there. But this has this is not over. So I believe they announced that Eli Drake and Joe Hendry will be facing each other at MediaCon. So maybe the blow-off match will take place there. Then we get a video of Matt Seidel meditating, and we see clips of him being defeated by Brian Cage and Pentagon Jr. And the video closes with his third eye opening. So wondering where they're going with this. Then we get Callahan backstage in his the little OVE cam, and uh, he challenges Pentagon next week to a Mexican death match. That should be fantastic. I actually didn't hear a single thing about that. Um, I did get some spoilers, and then Impact decided to spoil the same thing, so it wasn't the end of the world. But the fact that I got spoiled by something that happened on the most recent set of tapings by some people who don't even cover Impact Wrestling is absolutely ridiculous. Um, then we have Allie vs. Sue Young. Um, much like Ali said in her interview, she can no longer be distracted. Um, unfortunately, those distractions did happen during the match. Um, Ali started off strong, ended up on the outside. She starts focusing on the undead brides. Um, she goes back in. Su Young takes advantage of this. She has the upper hand. Ali start starting to mount a comeback. The undead bridesmaids gets involved. The maid of honor takes out Kiara Hogan, who is ringside with Ali. Uh, Su Young goes for the panic switch. Allie is able to reverse it into a lung blower. This brings Tessa Blanchard out. She goes for the hammerlock DDT on Allie. Su Young locks in the mandible claw on Tessa while this is all happening. Uh, Allie ends up hitting Tessa with a super kick and then hits a code breaker on Su Young, and she stands tall. This setting up most likely a triple threat match for, I would assume, uh, in two weeks at... I forgot the name already. Redefine. There we go. So, I know that match was taped because they hyped that before the tapings even occurred, so I would assume that would take place there. That should be a good match between all three ladies. I really like the way they ended this match with the whole sequence of Tessa being put in the mandible claw and then super kicked and everything. So, good stuff there. And that brings us to our main event, the LAX vs. OG street fight. So we see them outside. I believe they were in the parking lot. Each side has their own crew. King and Conan both step back and let the OGs and LAX beat the crap out of each other. Uh, King starts sending in recruits. So does Conan at that point because he's like, whoa, 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 we didn't agree on this. Uh, Homicide tries to slice Santana and then almost hits him with a gringo killer. That would have absolutely obliterated Santana if he was able to connect with that. Uh, King throws the pool balls in a sock to Homicide. Ortiz ends up getting a hold of him. He uses it on him. Hernandez then took out Santana and hit him with a border toss into LAX's crew. Uh, Hernandez, at this point, got a rope and started choking out Ortiz. Uh, Then he was handed a screwdriver... Hernandez, that is, and as Ortiz was on the ground, I guess Hernandez was going to go stab him with it, but Santana got involved. He took the sock with a pool ball and went ape shit on Hernandez. Hernandez and Homicide are both laid out. LAX picks up the titles. Uh, at this point, King and Conan are face to face. Things are getting heated. King wants Conan to strike him, and while he's saying that, he's also saying, You're not going to do it. Um, and we end the show with Conan striking King. Um, so yeah, this was good. They only gave it like five minutes, but that was really all it needed. It wasn't dragged out. Um, good way to close the show. I'm sure the war is not over and this is just another battle, but we will see. Um, and next week looks fantastic with that Mexican death match. 
Unfortunately, I probably won't be doing a review next week. I have a wedding out of state, which I'm not really looking forward to going to, mainly because I have to travel out of state. But anyway, that was my review of this week. I will see you guys hopefully Sunday for another Impact Report. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.